Ah, uh, would you take a look at Tesla, ladies and gentlemen? It's 9.50 a.m. right now on the East Coast, and we have Tesla up over 4%, over 127 bucks, and it's breaking out here on the one-hour chart, breaking out of the ascending triangle. So in this video, we're going to break down Tesla and the markets, and we're going to talk about Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. So if you guys find value, of course, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and get up to 15 stocks from Moomoo Moo and 12 stocks from Webull, linked right down below. Free money, guys. Who doesn't like free money? And with that being said, let's dive into it. So again, Tesla right now at 9.50 a.m. on the East Coast is breaking out of the ascending triangle that we called out last week. You guys can see clearly Tesla seen resistance over the past couple of weeks at about 124, 125 bucks. And you can see clearly during that time period, we hit $101 and we've been making higher lows ever so slightly since the beginning of this year. You guys can see that. And now officially we are at a multi-week high as Tesla is breaking out again of about 124, 125 bucks right now. And we're at, and we're actually pushing 128 as I'm making this video up four and a half percent right now. And look at that. We just hit 128.11 just about a minute or two ago. Not even. So Tesla is clearly being dominated by the bulls right now, which is great, at least in the very short term. Obviously, if we pull up the yearly chart, it's still on a downtrend. The bears, in, in the grand scheme of things, are still in charge. But if we're looking at the very short term here, if we're trying to make some money in the short term, you know, as a trade, which is what I'm looking, you know, looking at Tesla uh, as right now, I'm not looking to buy it as a long term investment quite, you know, quite yet at these levels. But as a trade, I'm really liking the fact that it's breaking out. So Tesla, if you guys didn't know, let's talk a little bit about it. They're reporting earnings this week. Actually, no, not this week, but next week on the 25th of Wednesday. So they're starting maybe to be some hype around the stock. We're starting to get some excitement, let's, let's put it that way, as earnings are about a week away from today, a week from tomorrow. And EPS is looking to come in at $1.19 for Tesla, and that, that's an estimate. And revenue is looking to be about $24.9 billion, which would be up 40% year over year. Pretty big number there. And if you guys didn't know, in the fourth quarter, Tesla produced over 439,000 vehicles and delivered over 405,000 vehicles. And in 2022 as a whole, you guys remember Tesla, you know, their, their big milestone number was a million vehicles. Well, in 2022, vehicles grew 40% <clears throat> year over year to 1.31 million, while production grew 47% year over year to 1.37 million. So yeah, Tesla is still growing pretty nicely year over year. They're expanding. They're, they're, they're investing a ton of money in the Texas Gigafactory. Like we've talked about what they're investing 700, 800 million, which in, in the grand scheme of things for a company like Tesla, what's their market cap now? 400 billion. Th Actually, no, it's like 300 billion, whatever it is right, right in there somewhere. 800 million investment is a drop in the bucket. I mean, they can make that back like that, right? It's a drop in the bucket. So this company is investing in, in, in itself, obviously going through a short-term uh, problem here, short-term turmoil with the stock price going down. Uh, but, you know, they're investing in themselves and they're thinking five, 10 years out. That's why I like Tesla. I might not be in love with the valuation, but you got to love the fact that they are thinking five, 10 years out. And the fact that they're now cutting prices, if I was a VW exec or, or exec, if, or if, if I worked at one of these top competitors, you know, to, to Tesla, I'd be shaking in my boots right now. If they really start cutting prices. And, and again, once they get that cheaper model in, they're going to blow the socks off the competitors. And they've already done that, but they're going to keep the foot on the neck. Like I've said in previous videos, and I'm sure you guys have seen a little side tangent. Did you guys see um, Elon Musk saying, you know, the Fed's going to crash the markets or that's kind of what he's implying, you know, with all these rate hikes, but in the grand scheme of things, guys, and this is a little bit of a different topic, but you know, the rates need to stay high as long as inflation is over six, it's six and a half percent right now. So we are starting to see rates get close to inflation, but for Elon to, to kind of imply that we should cut rates, not, a, not a smart idea. You know, that's one thing that I disagree with Elon right now. I mean, he wants to cut rates because it's going to help Tesla. Let's be honest. I mean, these rate hikes have really hurt companies like Tesla, uh, especially the stock prices and a lot of other companies out there. So he wants rates to come down because inflation, guys, let's be honest here. Let's be honest. Does it does it affect Elon Musk? Maybe in his businesses, yeah. But personally, I mean, does he really care about inflation? 
No, I mean, these these rich people, these people that, and I'm not somebody that's like, I hate the rich, tax the rich, take everything they got. That's not me at all. But these people that have a ton of money, they make a ton of money, inflation doesn't bother them. You know, goods going up 15% year over year, who cares, you know, if you're rich? So Elon's kind of a little bit disconnected there. I think rates should stay high to fight inflation. The last thing we want is rates to come down and, you know, prematurely, and then we get a huge spike of an, an inflation again. That's the last thing we want. Uh, but yeah, there's a little disconnect there with Elon, in my opinion. Uh, but what do you guys think? I mean, of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. You know, this guy, Elon, he and a lot of these, you know, ri really, really mega rich, cost of living could go up a thousand times and they'd still be just fine. You know, it's just crazy if you really um, think about it like that. But yeah, what do you guys think about Tesla now up over almost 5% over 128 bucks. It's at an intraday high. This thing I feel like with earnings coming up in a week could run into earnings. I'm not calling for that for sure. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future, but it's setting up nicely. I, I wouldn't be surprised if this thing were to run 130 plus towards the 140s. It's in the cart. So let me know your thoughts, guys, down below about Tesla. I'd love to know what you guys think, what's on your mind. As always, I'd love, I love talking to you guys in the comments down below. And quickly now, let's talk about what's going on with the markets. Markets in general are kind of flat. Actually, the Dow's down half a percent right now. The VIX is up seven and a half percent. So the Dow's down because we saw banks. Well, we had we had banks report last week, but we had some more today. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs last I checked was down. So we'll talk about that in a second. But overall, yeah, we're break even all across the board, except for the Dow. Some other movers we have right now are NVIDIA, which is ripping today, guys. It is up. What is it up now? About 4%. Let me see. I can't even see the keyboard. Here we go. NVIDIA. Wow. Look at that. 175 bucks a share pretty much today up 2.7%. This looks like it wants to break out towards 185, maybe towards 190 bucks. And going to Goldman Sachs, let's see how this is moving. Uh, last I checked, yeah, it was down. Uh, yeah, it's still down even more than last I checked. 3.6% red day so far for uh, for Goldman Sachs. So they reported earnings, guys, this morning. They did $3.32 in EPS on revenue of $10.59 billion. And the crazy thing is they missed on both of those numbers wildly. The EPS estimate was 548. It came in at 332. Revenue estimate was 10.83 billion. It came in at 10.59. So double miss for Goldman Sachs. And I'm I'm wondering is is, is this dragging down some of the other banks? JP Morgan, yeah, JP Morgan's down two percent right now. Wells Fargo 1.75. Bank of America is down 2.75. So yeah, this is dragging down the banks. But Morgan Stanley on the flip side is ripping. Morgan Stanley is up 6% right now, which is, uh, is is a big move for banks. And did we not call out, did we not call out this ascending triangle, guys? I mean, look, it's outlined right here. And I didn't draw this this morning. I could tell you that this was here from, you know, the last time we analyzed it. We have an ascending triangle. Well, we had one and <clears throat> now it's breaking out. Morgan Stanley, unlike Goldman Sachs, did pretty well. Morgan Stanley did EPS of $1.31 versus $1.19, so they beat on that. And revenue beat as well, $12.75 billion versus $12.64 billion estimated. So I wouldn't chase Morgan Stanley here. It's pretty over uh, overbought, rather. Um, you know, we just hit a fresh high on the four-hour, and we're probably not near all-time highs. Uh, but yeah, we're about 10 bucks off all-time highs, 12 bucks, And sure, we could get to all-time highs at some point, but in the short term here, we're overbought. You know, I'd wait, let the dust settle. That's me personally. And would see, we'll see what happens at about 90, 91, 92, 93. If it does come back down there and consolidates a little bit, um, you know, at those old highs, which should act potentially as new support. So yeah, guys, markets are now going even more green. We have the NASDAQ up a quarter percent, S&P up 0.2, Dow's down still half a percent, Russell's up 0.1 now, and we have Tesla. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Tesla is pushing now 129, up five and a half percent. And what did we say last week? I'm not, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but did we not say this was very possible? And it's here. It's breaking out. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm going to make a bunch more videos. Again, this is my last day in New York. Um, so we have we have some time to kill. You know, I, I kind of already walked around 
the uh, the entire well not the entire city obviously that's impossible to do in a couple days but if you guys didn't see yesterday I walked to the New York Stock Exchange from Hell's Kitchen where I'm at right now that was a pretty pretty uh, chunky walk there I did a 10 mile round trip I went to Hell's Kit well I, I'm, I'm in Hell's Kitchen went from Hell's Kitchen to Times Square which is very close you know a couple minute walk five. 10 minutes, not even. And then I went to the Empire State Building. Then I went to uh, the Flatiron Building. Then I went to Washington Square Arch, which was awesome. I haven't seen that. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. I don't even remember. But I went there. Then I went to the 9-11 Memorial Museum. Then I went to the New York Stock Exchange and went all the way back. It was a lot of exercise, but I'm not going to lie. My feet Oh my God, they're not that sore now, but yesterday, last night, my feet were extremely sore. Um, You know, it is what it is, you know? So if you want to check out that little mini vlog, four minutes, it's on the channel. It's my, one of my recent videos. Go check it out. It's called, I walked over 10 miles to the New York Stock Exchange. And if you got value in this video, of course, hit the like button, subscribe, get your free money from Moomoo up to 15 stocks and 12 stocks from Weeble, guys. It really helps out the channel. And it's free money. Just like that, you can get some free money and help out the channel. I appreciate you guys as always. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.